I was browsing Barnes and Noble, okay, which is like a very dangerous game to play. Ditcher Lizzie and then also Holly Black. Holly Black? How was I not gonna buy that, you know? Their drowned bodies discovered with sand dollars placed on their eyes, ew, which has a creepy face of a doll. Cool. I am myself a book lover. I do love a good vampire moment, okay? Like Edward Cullen, I see ya. Hi friends, today we will be hauling some books. My name is Lexi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today is a good day because today I will be sharing with you all of the books that I purchased from Barnes & Noble. We love a good Barnes & Noble in this house. We love a good shopping day in this house and we love a good book haul in this house. Let this be a precautionary tale to you, okay? I went to Barnes & Noble recently and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna get one or two new books and besties, I bought a lot more than that. I didn't buy all of this at once, but I have have been going to the bookstore more and more often. I don't know if anyone else does this, but every summer and every fall, those are like my two seasons for books because this is the season when I want a big stack of books to read by the pool or at a beach or on vacation. Am I going to vacation this year? No, but did that stop me from buying vacation reads? Absolutely not. So if you're thinking to yourself, I'll just go to Barnes & Noble real quick, won't even buy anything, don't do it, okay? You'll come back with a whole lot of books and uh, I mean, you will be happier, so maybe do it, I don't know. But let's go ahead and get started with the very first stack, which is going to be my kids lit stack. So the very first book is a book that I've been wanting to read for such a long time, and it is called Hotel Magnifique, and this is by Emily J. Taylor. This is about a hotel that kind of disappears and reappears in different areas of the world, and the hotel has like all of these wonderful and magical things happen in the hotel, and so when you go to stay in the hotel, it's kind of like you're staying in this magical place. And the book is following two sisters who both get a job at the hotel. This is giving me like big night circus vibes. I think this is gonna be like the perfect book to read in the fall. I did kind of already start it and I'm torn because a part of me just wants to devour the whole thing. The other part really wants to save this for September because it is so cozy. Next up is one of my most highly anticipated books of the year and that is the prequel to We Were Liars and this is by E. Lockhart. So so this one is called Family of Liars. I am so excited. I will be reading this very, 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 very soon. I think I'm saving it for a readathon, actually. If you know anything about We Were Liars, it's following a group of cousins named the Sinclairs. Their families are very, very wealthy. They literally own an island, which is like a whole other level of wealth. And every single summer, they go to this island in New England, and their families act like they're perfect, and they lie about a lot of things. And so We Were Liars kind of follows the cousins during one summer that alters the course of their lives. And this is the prequel. So we're following those cousins' parents when they were younger and they were teenagers on the same island. I have really, really high expectations for this and I can't wait to devour it. And next up we have a book called Sense and Second Degree Murder and this is by Tirza Price. This is a book that really caught my attention because it's loosely based off of Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen, but it's a murder mystery. Say less, you know? The next book I have is all about a magical hunt and it is called A Far Wilder Magic and this is by Alison Saft. So this book is following Margaret and Margaret lives in this magical place where there is a last magical creature, I think called the Hala. Basically there's this great hunt where you can enter in and whoever can kill the Hala gets their wishes granted and all of these riches and their wildest dreams and all that amazing stuff, right? And so she wants to kind of try to get into this hunt so that she can try to kill the Hala, but she needs a teammate. And so she teams up with an alchemist named Weston. And this is their story as they are trying to go on this epic hunt together. And I think that romance possibly happens as well. And it sounds really cool. Next up is a book I know absolutely nothing about, but I was so obsessed with the author's first book that I had to pick up the next one. And that is called An Arrow to the Moon by Emily X. R. Pan. So I read The Astonishing Color of After, which is this incredible story with so much beautiful magical realism and like very lush, 
gorgeous writing and it completely moved me to tears and broke my heart into a thousand pieces. And so when I saw that Emily XR Pan came out with this one, I didn't even bother to look at the synopsis. I was like, yes, well just yes, the answer is yes. I'm gonna read this because there's absolutely no way that I will be able to like summarize this in any way that makes sense. Hunter Yi has the perfect aim with a bow and arrow, but all else in life veers wrong. He's sick of being haunted by his family's past mistakes. The only things keeping him from running away are his little brother, a supernatural wind, and the bewitching girl at his new high school. That doesn't tell me a lot, but like, again, I don't need a lot, okay? I really trust Emily XR Pan, and I can't wait to read this. Let's talk about the two middle grades that I have. The very first one is an older middle grade, and it's called The Spiderwick Chronicles, and this is by Tony Ditterlizzi, and then also Holly Black. Holly Black? Oh my God, Holly Black wrote this? Why haven't I read this before? The Spiderwick Chronicles is following a family who moves into this mysterious mansion, and while they are there, they find a book, and the book allows them to see Faye, but like they open a gate and a door to that world that needs to stay closed. And then the last middle grade that I have here is a new one and it's called The Marvelers. And this is by Doniella Clayton. First of all, it's beautiful, okay? Like let's look at the end pages. Look at that, it's freaking gorgeous. But like I was browsing Barnes and Noble, okay? Which is like a very dangerous game to play. While I was browsing, I picked this up and I read the summary and I was like, are you joking me? This sounds so cool. It's about a girl named Ella and Ella, it says, is the first conjurer to attend Arcanium Training Institute, a magical school in the clouds where marvelers from around the world practice their cultural arts. And like, are you joking me? How was I not gonna buy that, you know? And next up is a book that sounds really, really good. Okay, so just so that you know, my vibe in the summer is I want to read a book like Never World Wake. I wanna read a book like We Were Liars. I wanna read a book like The Wicked Deep. I wanna read a book like Summer of Freaking Salt. These are all books that take place on the coast, usually in New England, sometimes it's like in Oregon, and weird shit happens. And this one sounds like it's going to be just like the others. It sounds so freaking good. So it's called The Drowning Summer, and this is by Kristen Lynn Herman. It just sounds really good. Six years ago, three Long Island teenagers were murdered, their drowned bodies discovered with sand dollars placed on their eyes, ew. The mystery of the drowning summer was never solved, but as far as the town is concerned, Evelyn's father did it. His charges were dropped only because Evelyn summoned a ghost to clear his name. She swore never to call a spirit again. She lied. And then we're following Mina's family and Mina's family, like their job is to guide the dead over to like the other side. And then it says for generations, Mina's family has used the ocean's power to guide the dead to their final resting place. But as sea levels rise, the ghosts grow more dangerous and Mina has been shut out of her family business. So I think this is about Mina and Evelyn coming together. All I know though is it's the summertime, there's dead ghosts involved, there's the ocean involved. It just, it sounds really cool and kind of spooky, you know? Next up is a book that sounds perfect for fans of like cottage core and like flowery magic. It's called This Poison Heart and this is by Kaylin Bayrun. So this book is following Brie and Brie has this wonderful ability where she can make seedlings grow like immediately. And so she can grow all of these plants and flowers from basically nothing. And one day she has actually left a huge mansion in Upper East New York from her aunt who dies. But this incredible mansion actually also comes with like a lot of sinister secrets, including a closed in garden of deadly botanicals. And while Brie is there, she discovers a lot of family secrets. It sounds wonderful. It kind of sounds spooky and gothic, but also like springy. And I don't know, the combination sounds really, really good. So I'm very excited to read this. And then the final book that I have here for YA is called The Counselors. And this is by Jessica Goodman. This is a book I actually purchased because I am participating in a readathon in June and it's called Suns Out Books Out. And this is the group read. So I didn't know anything about this, but apparently this is following Goldie and Goldie has been going to this very like prestigious summer camp for years. This is the camp that like the elite in New York and New England send their children. So 
they're all like very, very rich and privileged. And then Goldie goes back one year as a counselor. However, the year she goes back, things really, really get bad and a dead body is found on the campsite. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to some of my adult books. Okay, so this first stack was completely 100% inspired by Book Talk. I've seen this series going around, especially on one of my favorite content creators, TikTok channels, and her name is Dakota. Um, and she loves this series, so I had to pick it up. It is the Elena Ferrante series. I don't know what the series is called, but it's the very first one is My Brilliant Friend. I loved these copies. I actually purchased these from Blackwell's in the UK, I think, um, and they're just, they are so beautiful. So I don't really know a lot about this other than the fact that this entire series is actually centering around a friendship between Elena and Leela. And the series is just following all of their heartache and all of the challenges that they face in life growing up in Naples, Italy. And it sounds really good. I think that this is gonna be a great series. I think it's gonna be really, really heartbreaking, but I'm really excited to read it. I've heard excellent things about this. So I got My Brilliant Friend, The Story, of a new name, those who leave and those who stay. And then finally, the story of the lost child, which has a creepy face of a doll. Cool. And next up, I picked up quite a bit of romance, the very first one being Emily Henry's newest book, Book Lovers. So I've heard a lot of mixed things about this, but I love Emily Henry and I'm really, really excited to read it. So hopefully I love it. I am myself a book lover. It's a good first sign. So this book is following Nora and Nora wants to be the heroine of her own story. She's obsessed and in love with books, but she feels like she isn't necessarily the main character in her own life. And she really, really wants to change that. She ends up going on a trip with her sister who she loves so much. And while she is there, she keeps bumping into this brooding book editor named Charlie. And I guess both of them kind of spark a romance. Next up is a book that I feel like I've talked about in a vlog, but I don't think I've officially hauled it yet. And it is, Act Your Age, Eve Brown, and this is by Talia Hibbert. I loved Danny Brown so much. I really, really wanna go ahead and continue on in the series. I was looking for the very first book, but um, my bookstore didn't have it, so I just picked up this one. But this one sounds so freaking cute. I know that it takes place in the Lake Districts, which is one of the most beautiful and picturesque places ever. And it just sounds like it's gonna be a really, really good time. So this book is following Eve, and Eve shows up to try to get the position as a chef at this local inn, I guess in the Lake Districts, and the inn's owner is the love interest. His name is Jacob, and it's about their meet cute and their romance kind of at this cute, cozy little inn, and it sounds really, really charming. Okay, next up, I picked up quite a few thrillers. I'm really stocking up for Summer Ween, and I wanted a lot of options. The very first one sounds so freaking good. I haven't seen it anywhere, like online. I just was browsing, and I found it, and I was like, you're coming home with me, and that is going to to be the perfect guests. And this is by Emma Roos. So in 1988, Beth is 14 years old when her aunt takes her to stay at Raven Hall, a rambling manor. The Averalls, the family who lives there, are warm and welcoming, and Beth becomes fast friends with their daughter, Nina. At times, Beth even feels like she's truly part of the family until they ask her to help them with a harmless game and nothing is ever the same. And then we're gonna go ahead and fast forward to 2019 and we are now following Sadie who is an actress struggling to make ends meet when she lands a well-paying gig pretending to be a guest at a weekend party. She is sent a suitcase of clothing, a dossier outlining the role she's supposed to play and instructions. It's strange, but she needs the money and when she sees the stunning manor she'll be staying at, she figures she's got nothing to lose in person, Raven Hall is even grander than she imagined, even with damage from a fire that happened before. But the walls seem to have eyes, and as day turns to night, Sadie starts to feel that there's something off about the glamorous guests who arrive. And as the party begins, it becomes chillingly apparent that the unseen host is playing games with everyone, including her. Next is a book that you will not be surprised I picked up, and that is called The Woman in the Library. I love a book set in a library. And this is following a woman who was murdered in the reading room at the Boston Public Library. And all of the people who were in that reading room are now suspects. That's all I know. I'm really, really excited. It's kind of giving me like the Karen M. McManus, is it called One of Us is Lying or something like that? Like those vibes. And I loved that book. So I'm excited to kind of see how that plays out in this story at a library. Next up is a book I don't know anything about. I purchased this because I loved Gone Girl and almost 
everyone collectively has said that this is actually even better and it's called Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. But again, this is one that I really don't know a lot about. This is following Camilla who has just been sent to her old hometown to try to figure out what happened to these two teen girls or like preteen girls who I think have gone missing. Oh no, murdered, they were murdered. And while she is there, she finds herself identifying more and more with the young victims. That's all I know. So we're trying to uncover this murder mystery case and this girl is going back to her hometown. It sounds really ominous and I'm very excited to read it. And then the very last book that I have in this stack is going to be The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. And this is by Grady Hendrix. This is a book that I picked up because of Miss Latte herself, Miss Olivia Reads a Latte. Um, this is Liv's like one of her favorite books. She loves Grady Hendrix. I'm so excited to read this. This is just about, I think like a book club in the South and I guess a vampire moves in next door and now the book club has to try to save the neighborhood and all of their children from this vampire. I've been really hesitant to pick this up in the past because people have said it's very scary and very like graphic, like very gory. And I don't do well with graphic goriness. I'm good with like scares and like thrills, but that stuff like turns my stomach. So we'll see how I get on with this, but I do have high hopes. I do love a good vampire moment, okay? Like Edward Cullen, I see ya. But I don't know, maybe this will be really too scary for me. Who knows? And now let's move on to the final stack of books. So the very first book I have here is Half a Soul, and this is by Olivia Atwater. And this is a romance. It's a Regency romance, but it's a Regency romance with fairy tale elements. And that sounds so good. This has been described as Howl's Moving Castle meets Pride and Prejudice. And like, can you imagine? Like how perfect would that be? We're following Theodora and Theodora has been cursed by a fairy basically so that she never suffers from embarrassment, which doesn't sound bad, but this kind of tends to lead to scandal around her because she's never embarrassed of anything. And so she kind of just wants to get through the dating season as quickly as possible possible without being noticed. However, she actually catches the eye of a Lord Elias and Lord Elias has been known, I guess, to make three impossible things happen before breakfast and he becomes increasingly interested in Theodora and her predicament. Um, and if this sounds good to you, I actually did an entire Regency romance type video and I will link it down below. And I uh, mentioned a lot of Regency romances in that video as well that I have also purchased recently. But since I did like a whole Whole video on that. I'm not going to go through every single one here, but yes. Next up, we have a stack of books that I actually purchased and talked about in a vlog. So I will go ahead and leave that down below somewhere if you are interested in checking it out. But briefly, the first one is going to be Freshwater and this is by Akawe Amezi. And all I know about this book is that we are following Ada and Ada has one foot in this world and one foot in another. And I'm kind of going into this not knowing a lot because I like the idea of going into to this magical realism or surrealism story, not knowing a ton. But I've heard incredible things about this and I'm very excited to learn all about Ada. The next book here I purchased is called The Witch's Heart and this is by Genevieve. Gornick, I think. And this is a Norse mythology retelling between Angraboda and Loki. I hope I'm saying her name right. I think it's going to be a little bit of a romance, but it is considered, I think, literary fiction. And I'm really, really excited to read it. I've never read any of the myths about Loki before. So I really, really can't wait to pick this up. The next book I have here is A Treasury of Folklore, Seas and Rivers, Siren, Selkies and Ghost Ships. And this is just a book basically exploring like different myths from different cultures about selkies, sirens, and ghost ships. Yeah. Next up is a book that has been getting a lot of hype, specifically I think on like Bookstagram, and it is beautiful, and that is called Just By Looking At Him by Ryan O'Connell. This book is following Elliot, and Elliot is a TV writer, and he doesn't really feel like he's getting a lot of fulfillment from his job. He's also disabled, and he, I think like eventually kind of slips into this obsession with a sex worker named River. It's all about how he can try to overcome different addictions, how he can find out what fulfills him in life. I think, and then also finding his own agency apart from his job. It sounds really, really interesting. I've heard this summarized in so many different ways, so I'm not sure if I'm doing justice to the summary, but it sounds really, really good. I love books that are exploring kind of like trying to find yourself in life and what makes a person happy. So I really can't wait to read this. I think it'll be great, and I have very, very high hopes for it. Plus, it's gorgeous. 
Next up is a very, very dark book. I think it's a thriller and it's been compared to American Psycho, which I've actually never seen, except that this is like the protagonist is a girl and it's called Boy Parts and this is by Eliza Clark. This is a book talk by, I've seen this on so many people's like lists for like really, really strange and weird thrillers and literary books that they really recommend and enjoy if you enjoy like weird things and like scary books. And I like weird things and scary books so I picked it up. Um, but like the cover is scaring me, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna enjoy this or not. I can go ahead and let you know as soon as I finish it though. But it's about a girl named, what's her name? Irina, and Irina takes like these explicit photographs, I guess, of men for like magazines and for her art and things. And it's about Irina and her obsession with her love interest, who I think is like her best friend, I think they become romantic with each other. I don't know a lot about this. I know that Irina is like a very unlikable protagonist or narrator. I know that this gets very, very dark. I think it's supposed to be considered like a literary thriller, but I don't really know a lot more than that. So I will read this and I will report back. Next up is a book that has been compared to Sally Rooney and I love Sally Rooney, so I wanted to pick it up. It's called Topics of Conversation and this is by Miranda Pokey. And all I know about this is that the entire novel is composed exclusively of conversations between women and it's supposed to be conversations, I guess, that are like exploring motherhood and dating and what it means to be a woman. I don't really know anything else other than that, but it's been compared to a lot of really, really great people, including Sally Rooney. So I'm hoping that it's really good. Next up is a book that has been getting a ton of hype and buzz, and that is called The Paper Palace, and this is by Miranda Crowley Heller. So this particular book is following Elle, who is a married woman who wakes up, I guess, in the back of her childhood home or something in Cape Cod. But this morning she wakes up, everything is different because the night before she had a passionate encounter with a childhood secret crush and best friend. But but she is married. Naughty, naughty, L. Next up is a little bit of magical realism and it is called Papisho and this is by Leonie Ross. And look at the cover, you guys. I cannot. This is so beautiful. It says, everyone in Popisha was born with a little something different. A boy, a little something extra. The local name was Kors. Magic, but more than magic. A gift? Nah. From the gods, a thing so inexpressibly your own. And we are just following all of the different residents who live in Popisho and all of their magical gifts and how all of their gifts kind of collide. And then it does say on the back, meanwhile, while all of them are living their lives, a storm is brewing. So I don't really get a lot from the synopsis, but I love the vibes from this. I love that it's going to be magical realism. And I think this is going to be a great one to devour this summer. The next one is a book that has been getting so much hype and so much praise from so many people and that is called Great Circle and this is by Maggie Shipstead. So this book is following two different perspectives. The first one is Marianne and Marianne basically just falls in love with flying and she wants to be a pilot. And then the second perspective is Hadley and Hadley is the actress who is being paid to kind of like um, act out Marianne's life like years and years later when a film is being produced about her. And it's a book following both perspectives and how both of their stories stories kind of collide. It sounds really, really interesting. I loved like Evelyn Hugo, so I actually do enjoy reading about like glamorous actors and actresses sometimes. I think it's gonna be really, really great, but like the reason I picked it up is because I've heard so many excellent reviews about it, and I think it's going to be really good. I haven't heard a single negative review, so I'm really excited to read this one. Next up is a Rachel Cusk book, and this is called Second Place. Look at that stunning color. It says on the back, Second Place is a haunting fable of art, family and fate. It is the study of female fate and male privilege, the geometries of human relationships and the moral questions that animate our lives, reminding us of art's capacity to uplift or destroy. And then the final book I have here today is going to be The Island of Missing Trees and this is by Elif Schaff. This is a book that's kind of giving me like Romeo and Juliet vibes. We're following two different teenagers who meet every single day, I think on this little tiny island right outside of their homes in this cave and they're 
families hate each other, they come, I guess, from like different opposing sides. I think of like a war. And one day there's this big, huge, tragic war and they never get to see each other again. And then years and years later, one of them comes back as a botanist to, I guess, sort of study some of the plants on this little island, but really he's there trying to find his long lost love. And there you have it, you guys. Those are all of the books that I have purchased recently for my big summer book haul. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And please let me know down below if there are any books that you recommend I should pick up this summer. But I think that's it. If you have gotten to this part in the video, please leave me an ice cream emoji. Is there an ice cream emoji? There better be. I think that's it for now though, you guys. I love all of you so very much. And until next time, book lovers, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book. And I will talk to you very soon. Bye. Always think of you when spring comes Like it's something in the air at that time Don't know why Always dream of you when spring comes It's like the heat on my skin takes me back to the time That you want